Nasty, DJ Cam, and he's sitting there. Waterwave TV, man. Y'all see what the fuck going on? We turned up this bitch. Shout out Waterwave TV! Welcome to another Waterway podcast. Today we got the basketball phenom legend, Hooper himself, Jordan Horn in the yes, building. Sir. Yes, sir. Now we come in. Um, how you been? I've been good, man. Just working out. Home for the summer, working out, working kids out, staying mm -hmm. busy, staying out of trouble. So that's all I've really been up to, man. Dope. You said uh, working kids out. Is that with that uh, that basketball program? Yeah. Right with the TVP yep. basketball? Yeah, uh, Tunnel Vision on Purpose, uh, ran by uh, Therese Van Pelt. He's been my trainer for the past five years. So um, I came back home last summer, um, training kids, something I want to do anyway. So he kind of mm -hmm. took me under his wing, added me to his team, and we've been at it all summer. It's been yeah. real fun. Yeah. Well, did you ever um, – was that something you wanted to do when you started playing basketball? Like, did, were you, when you, you're like, well, I guess not when you first started, but when you maybe got to like the college level, you wanted to kind of give back. Yeah, when I, I say when I got to the college level is when I wanted to give back as far as like the training wise. I always wanted to kind of give back to like the younger generation, my community, and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, I say training basketball wise, yeah, around college. Yeah, that's kind of. I remember when I was younger, it was I always wanted to work with like the older high school guys, or the yeah. college guys, and stuff like that. So it's cool to kind of get back. For sure. Um, but yeah, speaking of like when you were younger, um, you went to Tartan High School, right? Um, yeah. When did you start hooping? Uh, I started playing basketball when I was like a year and a half, two years old. Mm -hmm. When I started, when I first had a ball in my crib, the, the same story kind of everybody has when they grow up playing basketball and stuff. But competitively, competitive like basketball, I probably started when I was like six, maybe five or six. I was always up on the older team, so I had I four the brothers, so mm -hmm. um, I always played up really until I got to like my junior senior year of high school playing varsity. So um, I was six years old playing eight and under, nine under teams when I was when I was younger. Dope. Yeah, I, there was a few guys that would do that like when we were younger as well, and I think we might have played against each other when we were because we you're 2017, yep. right? Too, yeah. I think we might have played against each other in like a summer league or something like that, but we, maybe we probably just one have. or two games. Probably have. I, I quit playing basketball when I was in like 10th grade though, but mm -hmm. I played every year before then basically. Yeah, we probably ran into each other sometime. Yeah. What's like? Yeah. What what kind of what class is Tartan in? Uh, we're 4A. 4A. Yeah, yeah we're so, in the highest class. So, yeah, is 4A the highest for basketball? Yep. 4A, 3A, 2A, 1A. Four A is like I what, I Hopkins. Think East must have been like three. Yeah, I think two. yeah, I think East was like three. Two maybe. I don't remember because I remember football was like four A, but that goes to six A, doesn't it for football? I don't even know. Those get confusing oh. when it comes to football. I focus straight on basketball. Yeah. Yeah. Did you you did you play any other sports in high no, school? No, I didn't play any sports in high school besides basketball. But eighth grade is when I stopped playing football. Mm -hmm. um, my high, the high school football coach always used to beg me in the hallway, like, mm -hmm. just come play, come play. That's how it was for Yeah, us we, too. we need a quarterback, blah, 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 blah. But I was so stuck on basketball, I didn't want to play football. Probably my biggest regret, though. Yeah, because you definitely could gain, you know, get strengths from playing football that you can't gain from getting for sure. from basketball, like obviously hitting people and just the different type of workouts they put you through. But basketball yeah. isn't all year round sport, and you can kind of, uh, you could definitely fall behind because. It's indoors, so yep. it's like it don't matter what the weather's like. Facts. Especially for a state like Minnesota where a lot of other sports is like seasonal. Like yeah. football, you can't – unless there's a turf or you have a dome, you can't play football right. all year round. So a lot of people in Minnesota are playing basketball, hockey, and stuff you play indoors that goes all year round. So you got to stay up. Um, Tart, uh, you were a Minnesota basketball finalist. Yep. 2017, third-team All-State honoree. Mm-hmm. Is that Mr. Basketball something you kind of like strive for, or is that nah, just, you know, kinda it just kind of it just kind of came around? I wasn't mm -hmm. really thinking about it. I was, I wanted to get back to the state tournament after my freshman year, so I'll, that's all I was thinking about was winning the state championship. Mm -hmm. Did um I don't I guess I don't really remember who won state, but like how did you guys turn out? <laughs> my senior year? senior year, we lost to Creighton Durham Hall in the section championship. They had Daniel Terrell, Cy Chapman, Ryan Larson, a bunch of Division One guys. Uh, we lost to them, and I think they. I think they lost in the state championship. I want to say to Apple Valley when Trey was there. Mm -hmm. I think he got. I think he won it that year. Yep, they won it that year. We yeah. lost to Creighton. I don't even like talking about that game. <laughs> I don't. That's kind of that's that's probably how I'd feel. Our, our, like our foot, like I was football was my main sport. 
Yeah. Um. So like when we we went to like sections and whatnot, and we we like lost right away, and it was just like some that you just don't really want to talk about anymore. Nah. But it's like, it's like also just move on from it. Also, but it's like when you get that close to like the state and the state tournament and shit. And just Man, kind of I was that close two years in a row, section championship game back to back. Yeah, at least you get to make it there though, because that's the spotlight that you need to be able to play under the next level right. at a good university. For uh, sure. Where did you go first out of? Uh, high school? I committed to Siena Siena College in Albany, New York. Well, I've heard I've heard of that place. Yeah, it's upstate, um, probably like two hours from New York City and all, all that stuff. So mm-hmm. played in the MAC conference. What was it like being in New York? It was fun. Um, I still keep keep touch with a lot of my teammates and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Built a lot of the relationships with even some of the coaches. The the coach who actually like recruited me there. Um, coach Abe, he's the head coach at McAllister right now. So he's from Minnesota and kind of had that Minnesota tie. And um, he brought me to Siena and built a great relationship with him. Still mm-hmm. still very close with him. And then after then was NDSU? Yep, I went to NDSU. My coach ended up resigning at Siena. Um, so I wanted to get home, play closer uh, to home, have my grandparents get, get the chance to see me play in college because they didn't get to see me play at all my freshman year. So um, I wanted to move home thinking that they get a chance to see me play and stuff like that. It didn't really work out like that, but um, NDSU, I was there for a year after at Siena. Mm-hmm. Now Texas, don't say it, uh, University of Texas, Permian Basin. Permian Basin, yeah. Perme- Permian? Yeah. Permian Basin. U- UTPB, just to keep UTPB, it short. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so you don't get confused. It's in Odessa, Texas. Yeah, and you got two more years, right? Yeah, I got um, one more year. Um, uh, to finish from graduate, um, mm-hmm. and then I got that extra year because of COVID. So mm-hmm. um, I really be next year of my fifth year, and I get the sixth year after that if I want it. So, Cause Cause I, yeah, I, did you have an injury or something? Yeah, I year broke two, my right? foot uh, my junior year. So that year after I left NDSU, I broke my foot, redshirted all season. So I had that year whole year back. Mm-hmm. So you've definitely been been through it, moving to the third, uh, yeah, you know, third school, sure. injuries, COVID year. For sure. Um, would, you, would you say the injury is probably one of your biggest setbacks so far, like, in your basketball career? Uh, probably on the court-wise. I think it was, a, like, a big eye-opener. Um, mm-hmm. I got to kind of sit back and just watch the game. It was a little different. I never really had an injury that had me out all year. I sprained my ankle. I mean, I've had a little, like, yeah. knick-knack injuries and stuff like that, but never nothing where I was out the whole year. So it was a little setback, but I think it really set me forward for that next year coming yeah. in. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe made you realize that, how much you really love basketball when you couldn't play it for sure I don't, like you said you haven't had any crazy injuries where you're out for like months yeah like you can't run you can't dribble yeah, you can't cross you know you can't work on your basketball can't skills. do nothing that's a big part of my life so when that was gone it was it was very it was a very tough time mm-hmm. um, when i was hurt but i mean those type of things kind of build build me for the moments like these and yeah. stuff like that and yeah. then the covid year did you i don't know what what like the rules were when you guys were playing but did mm-hmm. you have to play with masks on or did you nah. was there just no games nothing going on no nah, it was um there was we had games and stuff going on. We had, I think, we only played like, we might have played under twenty games mm-hmm. this past season, but um, we didn't have to play with masks or anything. I mean, yeah. I seen some. That should seem that. I mean, that seems so nah, pointless. Bro. It was it was crazy. We were, we were playing against UTSA in an exhibition game last year, and some kid checked into the game. He had just had a mask on. I kind of like take a double take. I'm like, it's really crazy. The world is coming to like. I could not imagine having to play with a mask. No, nah, I couldn't do it. I had to do it a couple of times, but I can't breathe and things. Yeah, on. It's, it's it doesn't even make sense. No, nah. like, it really doesn't. You're playing. You like I don't like. like it just not makes sense. Nah, I don't to explain. You sweating, dripping. Like it's just not like it's not one. It's not healthy. Two. It's healthy for yourself, breathing wise. Right. And it's like if you were, were if 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 the disease or whatever you want to call it was that bad, like putting the mask on isn't gonna change nothing for a basketball. Makes sound like every one of my me and my teammates when we had that, yeah, that same I conversation. Ima- yeah, I can imagine it. It's the one thing. Uh, like when the COVID shit was going on, it was a little, like we opened up our store, like when it was kind of dying down a little mm-hmm. bit, but when we opened up, like it was still like a mask rule or whatever. Right. And like having, like I didn't really work too much during COVID. Like I got like, I like quit my job like right before it happened. Mm-hmm. And then like that, and then the COVID shit hit. So then like a lot of people were getting unemployment benefits and shit. Yep. So I like capitalized on that. And then when we opened the store, I'm like, damn, I got to wear this mask every day. And it was like the biggest struggle, especially with the beard and shit. Bro, I hated it, it bro. Not especially it. in class. That's the worst, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm well, so class, glad. Yeah, I, I hope we don't got to go back to that when I go back to school. They so. bet, bro. I couldn't imagine being like, because I wasn't, I haven't been in school for a few years either. Right. But like being in school with a mask on all day would drive me nuts. Nah, bro. It's crazy. Like, especially if they're being strict on it. Like if you can't pull your nose down or whatever. Like nah, they'd be on it too. I bet they would. Definitely be on it. So what made you choose uh, Texas Permain Basin? Then? Um, I was just looking really for a good, I mean, basketball fit. I mm-hmm. mean, I had it at Siena, 
um, a really unfortunate situation, my coach resigning. So I kind of lost that, kind of trying to find it again at NDSU. It mm-hmm. wasn't really the a, a great basketball fit. Um, and I put a lot of time into the game. So, like, I'm not going to go to a school and kind of waste my time because I, I put a lot into the game when I – um, expect a lot of stuff from it, so I wanted to get that same kind of like reciprocation mm-hmm. when I when I went to uh, Texas. So when I went there, it was it was great from the jump. I mean, I got to play my game and um, play at a really high level. People hear D two and they kind of think like, oh, it's trash, no competition. But my whole conference is full of Division one transfers, mm-hmm. dudes going overseas, and a lot of guys honestly who are yeah. better than most Division one players. That say, I played with and against. So. Yeah, I'd say basketball is a little a little bit different too. Um, I'd say like a lot of D two football is pretty competitive. Certain mm-hmm. certain like conferences are, but in a full scale of Division two football, it's not the best. Like right. it's not the best. Like you find better conferences in some D three aspects mm-hmm. even. But basketball, only five people are on the court at a time, and what maybe ten if you're going to really push it twelve on the bench at yep. most. So it's like a football team has 57, 62 guys on right. a roster, or whatever. But a basketball one's only going to have fifteen. 15 at the max you could say yeah and probably eight of them are gonna really play yeah I so mean, it's like it's the the competition at d2 level is a lot different you'll get the guys that could go d1 and maybe have to fight their way right. through, or they're gonna get a you know immediate chance to compete at a d2 yeah. level and I, then you, I mean yeah. a lot of these d2 guys are like just as skilled or maybe even more skilled than a lot of division one guys um but the only thing that the, the biggest difference to me is i mean guys division one I, I mean especially high major division ones are just blessed with something that not everybody else is blessed with. I mean, just God-given, just athletic ability, mm-hmm. 6'9", can jump I, out the gym. Yeah. A lot of kids don't have that. Stuff you can't teach. Yeah, stuff you yeah. can't teach. A lot of a lot of guys don't have that in Division two, so they rely a lot on their skill. And then there is there is people who are sprinkled in. They're 6'5 point guards, 6'4 point guards who are super tough, handle the ball, and can play at a high-level Division one school. Mm-hmm. Was like was going uh, to Division Two something that was on your like you wanted to do, or was that just kind of like the best offers that were on the table? I think it was. I think it was just the best decision. I kind of got over the everybody, I mean, my family included, friends was kind of like, don't go Division Two, don't go Division Two. And um, I had a couple of Division One schools talking to me um, when I was transferring from North Dakota State. But like I said, I wanted to find a, a good basketball fit. I mean, I kind of seen it as, as like guys who play Division Two basketball and are very successful, they can go make just as much money overseas as they would as a guy who is a rotation guy at mm-hmm. a division one, mid major division one, which I was at. I mean, so I kind of, I kind of got rid of that little like stereotype that division two basketball is bad. And I just, I went there and made the best of it. Mm-hmm. You definitely got to make the best of it. And like, obviously if you, if your team does better, you get, you'll get more publicity because exactly. you'll probably, you know, there'll be more people, more eyes on like who's going far in the tournament, who's, right. who's winning games and stuff like that. So if you can get put in with a good program, then that's definitely the way to go. For sure. Um, but now with the, the new rule, people can start making money now. Yeah. Um, do you think um, Division Two athletes might be kind of like, I wouldn't say like left behind, but kind of like it's harder, it'd be a little bit harder to gain the respect as like as of a influencer in this world rather than like someone that's like a, a you know a, a Division One school. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's always going to be a challenge in like for a Division Two school. I mean, mm-hmm. especially ones who like don't get a lot like. A money funded through their school they probably yeah. don't get i mean a lot of fans a lot of like notoriety and a lot of these division two is in like in a real small town so like mm-hmm. it's not a big fan base behind them so i think a division one schools kind of have the upper hand but i mean i don't think it's impossible i think a lot of division two schools should not mm-hmm. not a lot of division, division two schools but players at these division two schools like take advantage of this yeah, time right now do you because now I don't, I'm, I'm a businessman so i see a lot of like possibilities and different ways to now be, to be a basketball player yeah because you got to think it was always high school college hopefully i go to the nba or overseas right, right? that was like how you would make money playing basketball mm-hmm. but now you can go straight from high school to all right, i'm a i'm a good ass player i can go sit on the bench at the gophers or something right mm-hmm. and my name won't really grow too much besides maybe going to the bars and just meeting people exactly. and trying to be that or I, you can go to a division two school and just tear it up and now you can and and now you can actually make money off of that, right? Yep. Rather than just going D one because it, you, it's it's cheaper. Maybe you got right. a scholarship or something. But now you can you can go to this like a, a, D, a good program at a D two school and and really monetize Absolutely. off that. You think that'll like you think that might change like the Division two scene? You might see better people going like might gain more respect. Better people going there. Less people. Yeah, I think so. I going mean, to, like going to work your way up through the Division one for sure. Because you know? they I think they're gonna see more than just like the basketball side of it. They're gonna see like you can go to a town where you can be the talk of the town and you can 
be the, the, the face of the campus. And mm-hmm. although it's a small campus and a small community, but you're the face of that community. Exactly. And a lot, all those people are going to support you. I mean, that's how most Division two schools are, yeah. especially the really successful ones. I mean, there's a bunch of successful schools in our conference, and most of them are in, like, small, small towns. Mm-hmm. And the ones that are successful, they get a lot of a lot of support from their from their community. Yeah, I'd say it's it, it is kind of like it's it's a, it's really smart to like go to like one of these smaller towns mm-hmm. that all like they don't have maybe even if it's a, especially if it's a state that doesn't have a professional team, right? And it's like a, a really tight knit community that go to the games like mm-hmm. regardless of who's on there but if you can be that person that all the kids are looking up to right and like the parents are you know you're respectful you're not like a troublemaker off the court and stuff like that yep. and before you know it like you're the talk of the town because you drop 30 every night in exactly. a d2 school now every brand in that city wants to be like yo like come can we, let's give you a thousand bucks to mm-hmm. come take a picture at our store and say you eat here all the time you know? right like do this commercial for the kids that because the kids love you out here yep. and stuff but some all these local shops obviously that might not hit like a, a wide global scale of yep. you tearing it up in that random city but that could generate the money can that you something. could be making yeah, yeah. start it started from there and now exactly. you have all this you know background of all these you know commercials and stuff you've done and then right you build off it you might not even like think like dang i don't even need to go to the league i'm a fucking actor at this exactly. point i've been doing all these skits i've worked or you know like how you're doing the basketball mm-hmm. training stuff maybe you want to host your own camps because you built up this huge clientele of all these exactly. fans and people that love you for you not for um I guess how how many points are dropping because you you know you build yep. that second relationship. Got to use it. Got to use the game as a tool. I mean, it's mm-hmm. more than just a game. It's yeah. Now we can really use it as a exactly. tool. Exactly. Rule. Yeah, I'm excited for it. We got the water wave athlete stuff going on. Yeah, I'm I think excited it's gonna be, for that. It's gonna be a fun journey. That's gonna be dope. And I don't think we even realize like what we could do with it yet mm-hmm. until it re- stuff just really starts happening. Right. Because it definitely has been making a lot of noise. Like when I I went out to the I went to the bars last night. I went to a one in college. I went to KK. Uh huh. That's in Dinky Town, and it was like hella like U of M athletes were like all asking me about it and shit. Yeah. So it's like just like the the notion of water wave sports and water wave athletes already starting to make a buzz. And it's been like what like a, like a week since we've like. Man, announced I, it. I'd be at these pro am games and people ask me all the time like, what is it? Like, mm-hmm. what is? How do you get into it? And I got friends who are college athletes back home asking me like, man, put me on like, yeah. oh, like so it's that buzz is I definitely see it and yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. Yeah, me too. Um, and I'm I'm trying to think of the best way because I don't want to like, I'm, there's so many people that I would love to like work like be under Water Wave, but you only have like like myself, I could only have so much time to like right. to work with so many people. But there's definitely going to be like a perfect way to let people like just kind of like sign up and be like all right well we don't want to like fully take you on as like an athlete but here you know here's like a merch package and right. then like you know you get like a little discount code for something mm-hmm. kind of like we yeah, we just got a deal skirt scooters is like, i've seen that yeah, doing yeah. a deal with a lot of our athletes um where they get like you know discount codes to like sell on their website and like mm-hmm. you know they post pictures and whatever just paid for stuff and whatnot but yeah, I've seen that. So like, yeah, one, there's, there'll probably be a way of like setting it up perfectly, but I think we definitely are off to a really good start with it, like image sure. wise. Because um, like, I remember when I, um, I said like you were going to be one of the athletes. Other than that, because I, I didn't really, I knew Tartan. I didn't even know what city Tartan was in. Mm-hmm. Is it Saint like Saint Paul? It's area, in Oakdale. Right? It's like, like Oakdale, a suburb, right by Saint yeah, Paul, right? right outside of Saint Paul. So like, I didn't really even know. Like I figured. I don't know, I just heard Tartan. I'm like, oh, I don't know what city that is. Right. And all of a sudden, like, I, you know, I posted pictures of you. You, like, come to the store and shit. And hell, people are like, oh, I know Jordan. Yeah. Jordan's cool as hell, blah, blah, blah. And, like, I guess, you know, you were a pretty big deal in high school. I mean, that's what it sounded like. I, I wasn't just, in the basketball. I mean, I just thing. handled my business. I was humble. I yeah. mean, I wasn't, like, a cocky kid. I just handled mm-hmm. my business. I, basketball was everything. Mm-hmm. Treated everybody in the community. Like, people at Tartan, they, like, they loved me. And I was, I, I've been playing in Tartan the community since, like, fifth mm-hmm. grade. So, they seen that whole thing from fifth grade all the way to like when I graduated. So, mm-hmm. so the support I get there and the support that I got just straight from high school, I mean, it's, it's, it's nice yeah. to see. I mean, so, I, I wasn't the biggest athlete, the biggest like name and stuff like that, but a lot of people definitely show love. Yeah. So how was like the Tartan community, I guess, growing up? It was never like hella drama and shit. No, like. I didn't. I didn't grow up in Oakdale. I grew up in St. Paul, mm-hmm. um, but I just, all my older brothers and stuff went to Tartan. So, yeah. um, kind of just follow suit. Um, but yeah, I grew up in St. Paul. I mean, it was I grew up in the East Side. It's kind of like every everybody else kind of grew up. Um, nice. I mean, it was cool. I grew up at the parks. I played basketball all the time. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's obviously you go you go to the, some of these parks, you in the hood and stuff like that, and stuff happens. But nothing kind of like derailed me. I mean, I was yeah. I seen everything. I was like 
around everything, all my friends and stuff like that. I, I see everything. I'm not I'm not kind of dumb. I, I I always say like I didn't I had I grew up like learning what not to do. Like mm-hmm. I always tell my granddad that like I I didn't learn like what to do. Nobody kind of like took me under the wing. I kind of learned on my own like what not to do. I seen what not to do and basketball and then I just really changed my life Mm -hmm. you probably did so um what do you prefer pickup game wise do you like playing at the park assuming like a nice park not like no beat up yeah yeah, a nice outdoor park or you you would like in the gym I'm in the gym now because like I'm but what do you what would you prefer if you're just gonna like have some fun like if I'm gonna have some fun with my friends I'm I'm gonna probably go to the gym Mm because we're gonna have more fun being more competitive yeah when I'm outside I'm my knees, my ankles can't yeah. handle playing outside no more. I mean, I'm only 22, about to be 23, but, you, but still, almost like, every day. But probably, yeah, but like, I, most, yeah, yeah, I grew younger. up playing outside, and all them days in that concrete caught up to me for mm-hmm. sure. Anything crazy ever happened playing at the parks? Like you said, like uh, you learned what not to do, but ain't no, f- you ever there was never. I no mean, I've I seen plenty of fights break out on the court while we having to stop in the play. I mean. Police pulling up on the court, stopping the game and stuff like that. I mean, I've seen everything, stuff mm-hmm. that kind of happens in typical hoods, yeah. And um, oh, you're in the Twin City Pro Am right now. Yep. Have you played in that before? No, nah, I never got invited to it until mm-hmm. this year. So is it an invite thing? Pretty I much. I was going to ask how it works. I'm like, I need to sign up. I haven't hooped in two, a couple of years. But I, need, <laughs> I, need to, I need to lay nah, something it's, up. It's, uh, it's pretty much invite for the most part. I mean, um, you got the big names who are always going to play in it and have mm-hmm. their teams in it and stuff. But for the most part, it's invite only. I mean... I don't. I don't really know too much. I'm. It's my first year here, so yeah. I'm pretty much. Like, I was wondering. So obviously, like for, you play on the For the Love team, yep. and they sponsored it. I was wondering if they like hit, like messaged all the all the guys like you, like, hey, do you want to play on my team? Yep. Is that kind of how it works? Yeah, that's pretty much how it works. I knew somebody who was um, close friends with the guy for, with Dave um, uh, for the For the Love. He's our coach and stuff like that. He was real close friends with him. He was like, you should hit up Jordan. He like you trying to find some real hoopers to compete in a really good league. You should hit him up. He hit me up and. That's when I joined the team. Yeah, I've heard about it the past few years, but that was the first time I ever went to it was mm-hmm. when I went and watched you guys play. Um, who – and then the next game I didn't make it to, but you played, you played against Ty's team, yep. and I came right down to the wire, right? Yeah, it was fine. Have you played – and then I know uh, you got Zach Lofton on your team. Yep. He's played in the NBA. Yep. Um, but, like, Tyus Jones, like, how many how many times have you had, like, compete against the people that have been to the league? Um, I probably ever since I started playing with, like, Howard Pulley when I was in, like, eighth grade. Mm-hmm. I mean, I grew up – me and uh, Trey, Tyson's little brother, played on the same team. So we used to play against them. I played on the 15U team at, uh, at Howard Pulley and um, Tyus and Reed and all the – Reed Travis and all these guys was on the 17U team. So we played against those guys all the time. I mean, Minnesota's a little different. You don't get, like, all these high, like, profile NBA guys coming in and out to go play and stuff like that. But I, I grew up playing against plenty of future NBA guys, a bunch of future high-level college guys and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Do you think like playing now, like people that are, so like, like when you played against like Tyus, like who's in the league right now, mm-hmm. is there like a different? Is it, it just feel a little different? Like the way he c- controls the court or is just another guy. Nah, it's just court? another guy on the court. I yeah. mean, I mean, it might be a little different if it was like Steph Curry or Kyrie or like LeBron or something. But yeah, f- for sure. I mean, if that kind of cut, like if I was in the court with LeBron, I, yeah. of course you're gonna be a little starstruck. But at the same time, it's basketball. It's all the mm-hmm. same game. Nothing really changes. It's just different people on the court. Yeah. yeah. And you played like summer league, I assume too, right? Like. Not like summer league, but like AAU. Yeah, and all I, that. Um, yeah. I played. I grew up playing with Howard Pulley. Well, I really grew up oh, playing. Was that an AAU team? Yep, that's a, that's a. I thought that was a high school. No, nah, that's an AAU team. Okay. Yeah, you it are. sound like a high school. <laughs> <laughs> no, I grew up like when I was in I've elementary. Heard the name plenty of times. Elementary yeah. and stuff like that. I was playing with uh, grassroots with Brian Sandifer. So I grew up playing with him pretty much and all his little teams. And then once I got to middle school, I played with Pulley up until my last year. I went to Minnesota Fury. That's cool. I played AAU one year when I was like. Who'd you play for? Um, it was a guy that started it and that was in Mankato, obviously, because that's where I was out. But yeah. it was a Minnesota Slam. Never. I think it was only a thing for like three, four years. Yeah, I don't think he I like, heard of it. Yeah, it was like a coach that um, coached at um, at my high school, but then he coached at Bethany, mm-hmm. and then he just like started his own league. Cause he always coached like for AAU teams. Like right. that was mainly where he where he coached. Right. And he's like, "Fuck, it, I'm gonna start my own league." And we had like three teams or whatever. It was pretty fun. Like I, that was the best competition I, of no, basketball sure. I ever got to play, just because we had way more freedom. Didn't have to run like the the plays that have been you know brought up through our high schools for mm-hmm. generations and stuff we like i was normally like a guy that would be in the post and like i'm playing AAU. you know i can play wing right. i can shoot threes whatever you know have some more fun yeah, for sure do you enjoy uh like aau basketball or high school basketball i liked high school basketball a lot more um because it was just like i knew what i was going to expect like i knew what to expect i knew our tradition i knew everything that was kind of like set in stone mm-hmm. and um 
I think high school was a lot better because I, I created a like, relationship with like all my coaches and friends throughout those four or five years I was playing varsity basketball. So high school basketball, I think, was more fun. Plus, you get the crowds and you get to like interact with the fans and stuff. A, you you don't really got that, but yeah, everyone, co- but competing yeah. wise, I mean, I loved competing in AAU. I played against yeah. some really really tough players in AAU. I was gonna say AAU, people are definitely more for themselves, right? Because like they're trying to like see. There's, hopefully, there's a scout watching. Yeah, right I mean, hey, everybody. I mean, everybody's gonna say it's all about the team and stuff like that. Um, just for like around the cameras. I'm just being honest. I like, guess what most basketball players are gonna yeah. say like, yeah, it's the team first, but. Most guys, like when they're playing AAU basketball, like they, at that in the back of their mind, like I gotta get a scholarship this weekend. Like, yeah, yeah they want to win the games, but they do want to leave with that offer at the end. So I think guys are a little bit more like selfish during that time, and I mean they should be. I mean, yeah. and it's a little less like team practice, like I said, the plays yeah. and stuff. You know, like when you're playing high school ball, like you're really mingling as a team. But like at least for my AAU case, you'd meet once or twice a week for practice yeah. and then, you know, a tournament once a month or every weekend or something. Yeah, I, I mean, know. I mean, when you get to like higher level AAU teams, you probably practice a couple of times a week. And then in July, you probably leave from Wednesdays to Sunday or something for those long, big tournaments and stuff like that. So it's a little different when you got like, you're going to high level tournaments and playing on a high level AAU team and stuff mm-hmm. like that versus like the, one tournament a month type of teams like mm-hmm. I grew up playing on, you know. Yeah, I'm trying to make it to more AAU games. I was trying to do that last year, and uh-huh. then like all the COVID should happen, because um, you know, Josh Engler, that cameraman that's uh, been yeah, going yeah, crazy yeah. out of here. I seen him doing his thing like when he first started, and I was like, his videos are dope. Mm-hmm. Like he's just gonna he's gonna go crazy with this because he was right. doing every game, for, like every day he was uploading shit from every game, every high school game, AAU game through a year around with like Chet and Jalen Suggs and yeah. shit. And that was like, I'm gonna do that. Like I want to like do that type of shit and then the COVID should happen Facts. and then but now this is kind of how we're stepping into it now is doing right. it this way um but away from that type of stuff um I want to know your take on your top five players of all time top five players of all of like, time like in the NBA or whatever and all right I guess that would maybe talk about that would maybe come into where you, if you were like the LeBron James guy or a Michael Jordan guy no I'm a Michael Jordan guy so I'll probably say Mike's one that's just set in stone but mm-hmm. probably no order after that I'll probably say Kobe Bron it's three. Mm-hmm. Shaq is a personal top five. Shaq and Kevin Durant. That's my personal Those top two five. Personal. Yep. Because like, I was yeah I'd say um because you said Jordan James and Kobe yeah right? those are like that's it's fair that's top three, that's a pretty fair three yeah and I then, feel like that's everybody's and top then I feel three. like after that it could literally be anybody kind of anybody's anybody in that kind of one through twenty mm-hmm. you know did Michael Jordan have a like any specific any specific reason why he's like your guy i mean one his last name was jordan my first name was jordan so sense. like when i kind of figured out who that was and like who michael jordan is what he did like for the game mm-hmm. i think that just made me like i felt kind of special like I, my name is jordan i feel like, kind of connected yeah. but um i just growing up like everybody wanted to like sounds like corny but everybody wanted to be like mike i mean I had yeah. michael jordan posters i had sure. just jerseys and stuff like that so he was everything when I was growing up. The basketball, you said, I don't remember, but did you say basketball like ran in your family at all? Um, Not really. I'm the first one to graduate from high school, go to play college basketball, okay. really go to college. So, I mean, it ran in the family as far as, like, everybody played and yeah. stuff like that. But I was the first one to really do it. Yeah, I was going to say maybe Michael Jordan, maybe you got named after Michael Jordan. But I don't maybe, know. Maybe I don't, wasn't that serious. I don't even think I've heard the story of how, how I was named. And yeah. if I do, I don't remember it. Do you think, random side question, but do you think people that have, there's some people that have certain names that just, hoop because they like and they end up just working out because their names just match yeah i've there. seen it yeah i've seen a couple of kobe's that i knew who weren't really really good i think they just hoop because their name was kobe mm-hmm. or it's like I, I see it as like there's some guys that make it and they're like oh that name just sounds like they're professional like you know they're good hooper. yeah i know what you mean yeah i feel like that, <laughs> shit, that shit's more of a reality than we even think you said you watched the new space jam movie yeah it was what was your take on no, it? it was well, good i gave it a 10 out of 10 really? i mean everybody like is like kind of like our generation and like is kind of upset because it's not the same space jam it's not like for the older crowd and stuff yeah. like that and it's not for us like it's not, I, yeah it's meant for the kids i said that like i was like if i was a kid again like i told her like the other, like last night we watched like if i was a kid again i'd love this like mm-hmm. it's catchy i mean the stuff that like lebron is saying is like it like relates to like the real world now and how kids act now like the lingo and stuff like that so it was perfect i think it tied in perfect it was really good yeah i, I seen a a tweet or something that said, "I don't, I don't want to hear none of you like thirty-five year olds complaining that Space Jam's Selfish. cheesy or something like it's yeah. cheesy because it's supposed to be for kids. And exactly. you would have enjoyed it if you were a kid in this exactly day and age and whatnot. Um, if you had, if you had to make one shot 
to save your life? Would it be a free throw or a three pointer? A free throw. I I can hit the I think I can hit the three too, but I'll take the free throw. What part what what part on the court would you shoot the three? Top of the key. Is that just your, is that is that your spot or is that just easy? I spot think I probably I think that'd be the easiest spot, mm-hmm. top of the key, straight on. Yeah, because I've seen at the game. I didn't cause I I don't I didn't really know how you played yeah. completely because like obviously like I don't I don't know when I would have had the opportunity to watch you play mm-hmm. uh, in recent like recently, but um, you seem to be one of the I mean one of the best players that was on that squad. Honestly, you're like controlling the court. Are For you? Sure. Would you say you're more your like your main thing shooting? Is it passing? I think I'm. I think everybody would kind of call me a score first guard. Mm-hmm. I mean, people say that because, I mean, once I got out of high school, I kind of started playing off the ball because I could shoot the ball very well. Yeah. So I think everybody was like, he can shoot, he can shoot, he can shoot. Yeah. But in high school, like, I was having games where I had, like, 32, 12 rebounds, nine assists. Like, it was mm-hmm. games where I was doing, all doing everything and running the point. Where I, That's where I feel comfortable at. But, I mean, I think I'm a score first guard. I like yeah. to put the ball in the basket yeah, for sure. Say, one thing that was different with you than a lot of the guys that were at the pro am is a lot of them get the ball and do a bunch of dribbling to lead up to a shot. But yeah. like you're more of the like they're gonna do all the bunch of dribbling to lead up to the shot, realize they don't got it, they're gonna throw it back exactly. to you and you're just gonna hit it. As yeah, as you, yeah, you're gonna be. I like I'm like I'm gonna get to my spots guy. I mean, I it's times where I use stuff off the dribble and I try to do a little extra to get into a shot when I have to. But for most parts, I'm trying to get to my spots and score. Mm-hmm. Who do you think is going to win the finals? By the time they watch this, it'll probably, the finals will be done. But Facts. But, uh, Bucks are up 3-2. Yeah, right Bucks now up 3-2. is ugly right now. I want I want the Suns to win. Yeah. I love Devin Booker. If he mm-hmm. wins a ring, he might be my second favorite player right now. Um, and I want to see CP3 get one for sure. I want to see CP3 get one too. Do you think Devin Booker has the curse? Nah, I don't, was it Ken, Kendall Jenner? No, nah, I don't think he got it. I mean, I feel like I feel like he's doing pretty well, for, like with himself, like as far as like being. If he was, I mean, if he was cursed, fi- I mean, I feel, the, you'll yeah. lose the finals. I mean, You're right. That might be the curse. I seen a. I I seen. I didn't even know. Like they're dating or something. Yeah, I, guess, I, don't I didn't know. even know. But I seen a. Let's see a Nel, You know Nelk is. Uh-uh. The full send, people that did full send, they do all the jokes and shit. Like I think that. I think I heard of them. Um, I'm gonna show you this picture. They did a. They went to. They're in like Arizona, and they made this bus that had Kendall Jenner on it and all the re- her recent boyfriends that like hey, flopped or got stuff. injured or something. They were like <laughs> teasing. They were teasing uh, Air- like you know Suns fans. About yeah. Let me show you this picture. So it's like it was like this that was on the bus, and then the, then they wow. had then they had another one that was a. Uh, it was Kendall Jenner holding Devin Booker as a baby with all I them behind that. it. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. No, all them dudes is damn near cursed though. So I don't know. If, I don't know if D Book is under that curse. I hope he ain't. Mm-hmm. Are you a uh, who's your what team? What, what are you te- a fan of? Are you a rules fan? I've or? always been a um, like ever since KD came in the league. That's my favorite player. So mm-hmm. when he was with the um, with, he was with the Sonics, that was my favorite team. When he came to OKC, that was like my f- for real favorite team. So I'm always an OKC fan. Um, but I'm honest. Like I'm I'm wherever KD is at. Like I cool. I want to see KD win more and more and more. So mm-hmm. when he's at Brooklyn, I want to see him win. Is uh, I guess so. Besides, maybe your your top five players who you think are the best. Do you have a top five like favorite players? Uh, favorite players, yeah. Uh, KD would definitely yeah. be in there. Favorite players: um, Steph, Allen Iverson, Tracy McGrady. I, mean, I could go on and on. Paul Pierce. Mm-hmm. I got a bunch of favorite players. I was a huge Celtics fan growing up. Yeah, my favorite player is Ray Allen. One of my like, favorite players too. That was like one, that was like my first basketball jersey I got. I don't know why I was like obsessed with the Celtics, and it was weird because my dad never like told me about like the Celtics. He didn't, like yeah. he was never like he was more of just like he watched Vikings football and like whatever. That's right. about it. But like I just really enjoyed the Celtics growing up, maybe because they were winning and stuff. But I also just like the the dynasty of the Celtics just They're like was cool, appealing to me. And I guess, like, when my dad was my age growing up, he loved the Celtics, too, and he never told me that. So it was, like, a weird little, like, happen again. But, uh-huh. yeah, Ray Allen fan, that's, that's been my... KG. Yeah. Uh, man, I could go on and on. I'm trying to think of somebody who would, like, kind of be a surprise. Um, D. Wade, of course. Mm-hmm. Rondo, I loved. Jason Kidd. Steve Nash. All those tough guards. Fred Van Fleet. He probably one of my favorite players too. Fred Van, Fred Van Fleet with the Ra- with name. the Raptors. Yeah, what's what college did he go? To? Wichita State. Yeah, he was a bucket. Yeah. What do you think of uh, you? Um, I don't even know where it's. 
what do you think of like March Madness? That's like you you fuck with like that that time like yeah. watching it like. I mean, I yeah, I played in it, so it was tough. Oh yeah, you did. I did. Yeah, talk I put, about that. Yeah, when I was in India, she we played against Duke yeah. when they had they had their little super team with Zion, RJ, and Cam yeah. Reddish and all yeah. them. Well, yeah, damn, I I definitely. That might have been the last one. I might that might have been why your name was ringing a bell more than you going to Tartan because yeah. I feel like I watched that game and mm-hmm. it was probably just I, that name was just oh yeah man, like that game was probably talking about you because you're from here. Yeah, that game was live. I mean, because I wasn't really at NDSU. I mean, when I would play, I I think I played. Very, I, I mean, it showed that I played very well. So I wasn't even really expecting to get into the Duke game. I was playing really good in the conference tournament. Just didn't play a lot. And then when the, the Duke game came around, I just showed up. I mean, I played 14 minutes. It was the second leading scorer. So mm-hmm. uh, that game, that was a crazy experience. I didn't get to experience it. I mean, as a kid, you dream of, like, winning in the NCAA yeah. tournament, being the, the big name. And that's as a kid, that's what you dream of. So it wasn't what I dreamed of, but it was a crazy experience. I mean, checking into the game, seeing Coach K. I mean, I got to see him before he retired, thank God. Mm-hmm. So um, checking into the game, kind of like – double looking at him you know like he really likes that was probably first time i was ever starstruck in my life was seeing coach k Mm -hmm. not ever from a player or anybody it was when i seen coach k and i like checked into the game and i was like damn that's really him like that's wild it's crazy ass experience it was crazy that would be pretty cool except i mean you you definitely got you definitely got the best game to play if you were to get one to play in the ncaa tournament to get play against duke with the Zion, with Zion, yeah, and, yeah, it was tough. I mean, I think the, I remember watching the selection show. We were in our home gym, and I, it was like them. My dream school was North Carolina. Wait, so, so when you watch those selection shows, yeah, do you, you do you do you know? No, nah, we don't know be on there yet. No, nah, we we knew we were gonna be on there because we won our conference tournament. Okay. We just didn't so know you where had the we guaranteed tickets. Yeah, we had we punched our ticket because we won our. You conference. just didn't know what seed and where. Yeah, we, we didn't know where we were going. Was Duke a one seed? Then? Yeah, they were one seed. They were the number one team in the country. Okay, we played the number one team in the country twice that year, Gonzaga and them. So, um, selection show, like North Carolina was my dream school growing up. So like. They were another one seed, I think. So it was either them, Duke, Gonzaga, or somebody else. But you had played Gonzaga earlier in that yeah, season. Yeah, we played already. Gonzaga. They're yeah. not your conference. Nah, uh That was just like a scheduled game. Yeah, non-conference game. It was. They were tough. Mm-hmm. Rui Hachimura, Josh Perkins, Zach Norville, Brandon Clark. That's four NBA players right there. Corey Kispert, tough. So what did you do when they – Or Casey I mean, was sure. Did everyone players. go crazy? I mean, you knew you were about to get called, but, like, obviously you still get, like, you still celebrate, like, when they – when they said NDSU and stuff. And For sure, too. yeah. Yeah, that was tough. When we, had, we got all the fans and stuff there, so it was okay. it was cool, yeah. How quick did it go from excited that you're being there to, all right, let's try to win this game? Probably like the next day or two. Mm-hmm. I mean, not even, probably the same day. Like, I, pro- I like, probably worked out after that, so. Yeah, just like, yeah, damn, that would, that'd be so cool. Yeah, that was tough. I still got the pictures and stuff. That would be a cool experience. Is there, what are you into outside of basketball? I know you're into, like, fashion and clothes For and sure. stuff. But. I mean, yeah, I love just, I mean, everybody, like, well, I think most people like to look nice, so I like to look mm-hmm. nice and know what I have on and um, put different stuff together. So, I mean, fashion, um, working kids out. I mean, I'm really simple. I, I work out. Outside of working out on the court, I like to lift and do kind of take away, take a break from basketball. I like to work kids mm-hmm. out, be around my granddad, be around my my close family and stuff like that. I'm, I'm a simple guy. I don't really mm-hmm. like to do too much. Mm-hmm. Do you have any pregame rituals that are – uh, yeah, I'm super. Sti- I'm like overly superstitious. When Show up to the court three hours early. Yeah, gotta- I, sh- I like stand in the same spot during the national anthem. I'd say the same prayer during the national anthem. Um, like I'm, I listen to the same song. Like everything I do, I like put my certain shoe on. Like first, like I'm, I'm super. Like mm-hmm. if my routine's off, then like my mind like i might go insane for a little second mm-hmm. and snap back into it but um, does the routine start even before you leave the house oh uh, it starts as soon as i wake up yeah yeah a certain a certain amount of breakfast yeah i eat i eat the same thing for the most part when i when we got a home game unless we're on the, the road or something mm-hmm. eat a little different but i try to eat the same stuff at the same time if we have a game at the same time so damn i miss the feeling of game days yes yeah, that's like the so just know especially like in high school just knowing all day, like, you got this game tonight and you're not paying attention at all. High school class, is a little like, different, though. Like, I might have some homework I got to do the same yeah. day. And like, in college, I might have to do some homework before the game. And I don't like doing homework at all, like, mm-hmm. on game days. I want to just – You don't do anything but listen to music yeah. and think about how good you're Even when play. I'm in class, like, of course I'm going to pay attention. But I'm not really, like – I'm trying to get up out of here. I'm trying to go to mm-hmm. the game. And that, I think that's how most college kids are. I mean, you – 
that anticipation leading up to the game is like second to none. Mm-hmm. Damn. Are you 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 listen to music when you warm up, like yeah. in your own headphones, or yeah. you just whatever they're playing? No, I listen to my own. No, no, when I'm warming up, whatever they playing, I'm just kind of get locked in, get in mode. But like I'm superstitious. Like I stop listening to music at halftime. Like once halftime of like the game before us mm-hmm. um, is happening, like I'm shutting my I guess shutting my phone off. Or if we pull up to the gym at an away game, like before we walk in, I shut my phone off. Like I'm. That's how I am when it, when it comes to my games, yeah. Do you have a, f- a favorite? This might be the last question because we're gonna it's been going a little while. Do you do you have a favorite basketball memory? Favorite basketball memory. Favorite basketball memory. I have one for myself. If you want to think about it while I say mine. Yeah, go ahead. You say yours. I think. I was it. in fifth grade, right? It was our. I think it was like the fifth and sixth place game in a Fairmont basketball <laughs> tournament. I'm on the East team. We're playing against West for like fifth or fifth yeah. and sixth place, whatever the constellation shit is. I don't even, I normally don't play. I'm like this, it was like fifth grade. So like this is the uh-huh. first year I ever played basketball. I'm like a short little chubby kid at the end of the, at the, end of the bench. <laughs> My friend that normally plays all the time got fouled out. Cause we, oh, first of all, we went to like triple overtime. Yeah. Right? He gets fouled out. He's like crying on the bench. You know, a fifth grader pissed. He can't play, whatever. Right. I get put in. That's like the first time I was in since probably like the third, you know, since overtime started, you know. Um, and we have this. We only have one kid on our team that can shoot a three pointer because like uh-huh. we're so little at that point. He's the only one that can get it that far. <laughs> and we had like, I don't know. We we had like fucking five seconds left on the clock. So he dribbled play for him to like catch it, just dribble down and throw up a shot. Whenever it was tie game, he catches it, dribbles down, and I, I'm so I'm just standing on the other end of the court, just uh-huh. watching it all happen, like under the hoop, just like by myself, <laughs> just like just waiting for it to happen. Right. Right. This dude catch, dribbles it a couple times and just chucks up a fat three, but there's still like time on the clock, like he could have gotten closer. Yeah. And I just watch it come and it like come and like lands right in, in my hands. hands and I put up a little bunny <laughs> and it goes in and like the whole gym just goes fucking crazy. And like my coach comes like picks me up and like spins me around. And my parents like like go like they're just like what the fuck like they're going crazy greatest like sport. falling out their seats and shit. Greatest moment. And there was of like life. in the in the game after us was supposed to be the championship game. We go yeah. like, we're like triple overtime for the stupid ass constellation game. So everyone was super <laughs> excited for one for it to end and then for it to end that way. And I'll never live that up. That's probably like, that was my best moment. That's a big moment. Yeah. Now nah, probably my favorite moment. I probably got March Madness w- was dope. I mm-hmm. think that was kind of was like I got there. That's something I dreamed of. I think that's obviously up there. But yeah. when I was in a when I was a freshman, two when, seventh grade, when the seventh grade when I was with Tartan, we won a state championship uh, against a really good team, Maple Grove. Um, and I probably put that up there. And then my freshman year, um, we played Woodbury in the section championship to get to the state tournament. And like we couldn't get out of the first round for like the past when I was at Tartan, we couldn't get out of the first round for like a while. Damn, you, now that I'm saying this, I'm thinking of other moments. But, yeah, freshman year, uh, section championship against Woodbury as a freshman. I think I had, like, 20 in the first half, finished with, like, 28, um, went on to go to the state tournament. And I remember the, I was a freshman, so, like, everybody rushed the floor after we won. It was the craziest, craziest like thing Like winning ever. sections, going to state. Yeah, like, that was crazy. Uh, 3,000 people and stuff was there. So, that, I was big. But um, I, get, I get high school and then a college moment. College moment? My first big game in college when we played against Memphis when I was at Siena as a freshman, um, I was playing terrible. Like, I didn't really get. I went into Siena during the summer. I was playing great. Like I was probably six man, if not starting. I was in the rotation, playing a lot, p- playing my game. I'm confident. Um, first exhibition game as a as freshman. I'm excited. I mean, mm-hmm. um, so this is like before the yeah, season. Yeah, this is like. We played against a really good Division two school. We mm-hmm. lost like a Division the one Division one school. All Division one recruits lost to a, a Division two school. Lemoyne had a bunch of Division one transfers. Like I said, D two basketball is really good, um, but I had a really bad game. It kind of messed up my minutes and stuff like that throughout the season. And then I had a good game right before we played against Memphis. And then I'm like, I'm confident I'll be playing against Memphis, a high major school. Tubby Smith is the coach. I grew up from watching U. him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, from the U. I grew up watching him coach my cousin Rodney when uh, when he was at the U. So um, I'm excited. I'm going to the game as a freshman. Come in. I think I tied the record, or I was one off the record as most threes in a game. I hit eight threes against Memphis as a freshman. Yeah. I think I, I think I was. I think I hit like probably six straight before I missed. So that was a big game. That was tough. I wonder if Toby was thinking, damn, I should have recruited him. I, I hope he was. He might have known your name from just being in Minnesota for a while. I don't yeah, know he, how far away yeah, it was. Yeah, he, um, 
I think he recognized me. He probably seen me at a couple of tournaments. But yeah. once I once I said like he coached my cousin Rodney when he was at the U and stuff yeah. like that, he kinda put two and two together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, I appreciate you coming in. Nah, man. Get thank to tell you. Tell your story a little that. bit. Yeah. Get to know you a little bit more. We got a lot coming with this water wave athlete shit. Mm, Wish you the best sure. of luck on your season, especially in the rest of How long is the Twin City Pro Am going for? Uh, I think our last regular season game is probably middle of August, and they got the playoffs and stuff. So I think it'll end right before I go back to school, like mm-hmm. August 19th or something. So All right, pretty cool. I'm definitely going to keep coming. I'm coming for sure. There. Make sure you, you guys should come to whatever camera you guys are. Yeah, whatever. Wherever y'all at, man. Yeah. I, come to I don't know when it's dropping. Yeah, but I got a lot of podcasts to drop, but I'm going to try to get them going fast. For sure. It'll be before the end of the season, so definitely come to them. It's free. I don't know if the playoffs are free, but it's free right now. Yeah, so. it's free. A lot of good basketball. I mean, mm-hmm. everybody can say that. I, mean, I think Minnesota basketball, I think, is the best. I mm-hmm. mean, if not one of the best in the country right that's, now. That was another question I want to ask. Like, I mean, Minnesota basketball, no, is like it's almost like we're coming a basketball state. I think so it's, it's been a basketball state. state. I just think now it's kind of solidified. I mean, you just had Jalen. Mm-hmm. Probably the top three player in the country, and then you yeah. got Chet, number one player in the country. Two mm-hmm. Gatorade players, like national players of the year, back to back. And mean, then even even the women's side with Paige. And then you got Paige. I like, can't forget about the goats. I mean, that's Paige. She yeah. she's tough. You can't yeah. We literally have like three of the biggest names of exactly. high school slash freshman athletes coming out of our state. Yeah, man, that's crazy. But yeah, so this is Waterwave TV. This is Jordan Horn. Make sure you go follow him on Instagram. It'll be on the screen. Make sure you subscribe to us. You're right here already. Do it. Um, if you're listening on Spotify and all that, appreciate you listening. If you're in the visuals, you see the drink that's been on the on the table the whole time. But Northern Chill, it's our sponsor. Get their water. You can buy it in our store or on their website, northernchill.com or on Amazon. But, yeah, have a good day.